Hello all you volume crafters, it's Karen from Be Creative, back with another fun craft along in the volume event. Always have fun with you guys and thank you for purchasing the kit. If you didn't get a kit, of course you can get it. We have more and the nice thing about the kit is yes, of course you can do a project out of it. You can do a card and have lots of other supplies left over to do other projects. But we're also giving you a bunch of markers because I want to get into some coloring. I know we've colored before, but um, there's always new techniques to be had. So I want to talk a little bit about in this kit, um, there's a variety of markers in here, greens, yellows, and blues. In particular, the blues. There's three blue hues that aren't in the same color family necessarily. And when you have stuff that isn't like one, two, three with the same letter, it can be a little um, daunting to think about putting those together. So I want to talk about some techniques because sometimes when you try and blend things that are far apart, it doesn't work out so well. You just, you can't get a smooth blend because they are kind of far apart. However, I love that dynamic color difference when you get things that are across. Um, they're still kind of in the bluish blue turquoise category, but they are not close together. So you get that dynamic range. Uh, but it's harder to blend. So I want to talk about a couple unique techniques that we can use uh, to get that all blended together. That's just beyond just putting the colors on the paper and hoping for the best that it'll work. So that's what we've got going for us. Let's get right into it. So let's take a look at the kit if you purchased one. Um, if not, you can certainly follow along and I'm always about tips and techniques so that you don't need a tip for that. So if you like to color or you're curious about it, Continue to follow along if you have your kit. Let's dive right into it. I've got my kit here. Now you will notice you've got six markers in there. They may not absolutely match mine. I think we had a few at the end that maybe one or two of the colors is different, but that is not important. What's important is you have an assortment and that's what we're gonna be working with with the project. These are alcohol-based markers. And also in there you've got, let's pull everything out here. You've got a little piece of tool just for kicks. For uh, embellishment, if you wish, we've got a package of the lace tags. Um, I've got a piece of alcohol marker cardstock we're going to stamp on and color on. This comes in 50 sheet or 20 sheet packs, 8.5 by 11 by Spectrum Noir. It's the best stuff to use with alcohol markers. It helps you blend really nicely, and I use it for everything. I stamp on it, do everything. You've also got a craft card and envelope in there. What else? We've got a stamp set we're going to be using, um, and you have a shading card to do a little practice. So I think let's um oh and let's look at the project too let's move this out of the way we've got the card right here so you can certainly do your own thing this is the project we're doing here um and then i did one just for fun to show you something different you could do on your own i made it into a slim line i masked the area with some purple tape it's called purple tape we have it on our website and masked it off and used a blending brush and two colors of ink to blend that background and I stamped and colored in a little bit of a different hue you could do that too but the card we're doing today is this guy so let's get out let's start by um, some of the markers are wrapped some aren't if you have wrapped ones they just kind of came like that some did some didn't just make sure you open them up and um, you're gonna want to like nick it and then peel off the cellophane that's the best way to do it unwrap it like a candy cane okay then let's get out our our shading card and get going now our shading card is printed on the alcohol marker cardstock it's printed with just a printer so if you do get onto the black toner you are going to get a little lift this was not stamped obviously these are lines so yes you'll get some lift I just wanted you to be mindful of that so when you're coloring try and avoid the lines stay inside the lines as much as possible I have one here I started what I like about a shading card is it helps you kind of get comfortable with your markers it helps you swatch them it helps you do some practice blending so I did this guy here what I want to talk about in terms of technique today is that you don't necessarily have markers that are one, two, three, same color family. Here we have colors that are kind of far apart. I happen to have CT, what is it, GT1, BT4, BT7. They're not even in the same letter family and the numbers are quite far apart too. So it's a little bit tougher to blend. So how do we blend when they're farther apart? That's what I kind of want to talk about because I like it when they are far apart in color, you get a dynamic color range, but it's harder to seamlessly blend. So I use an acrylic block or a piece of cellophane. If you don't have an acrylic block, use the cellophane off of your stamp package um, as a poor man's acrylic block. That works as our blending palette. So how am I going to shade this? So I have one done here and I'm gonna show you how I achieved that. So I took my darkest color, you may have BT7 or if you have another darker color, a very dark color 
and I'm gonna add that to the side. This is kind of the side in shadow. You're gonna notice right away that this is significantly darker than up here, but it's actually the same color I used. That's what I wanna show you. I'm gonna go ahead and take my lightest of those three blues. I happen to have a GT1, whatever's your lightest blue color, and I'm gonna do that along the top here. I'm gonna do that also on the face of this little 3D shape here, staying inside the line so I don't get that toner lift I spoke of earlier. Okay, so I've got that just somewhat colored down. Now you notice this looks nothing like that. So how do we get it to kind of look like that and bring these colors um, closer together than farther apart? It's really important to use our acrylic block as our blending tool, as I said. So I'm gonna start with, well, first of all, I wanna change this side. I'm gonna go with the, B, the middle blue color. I have a BT4, whatever your middle blue color is. Whoops, fine point. I'm gonna color on top of the dark color just so I can tint it a little more of that turquoisey green blue color to change it so it's gonna be less of a stark blue and more of a turquoise. See how that kind of changed it and it started to blend? You're gonna notice on the back side, you're gonna notice a lot of bleed through as we do our blending. That's a good thing. Bleed through, not bleed sideways, right? So to do the face of the box, if I were to, and I'm gonna use one of these boxes um, as a sample, because also on the shading card, you can take it and swatch out every color of your marker. That's a great way to know what you're working with. That was terrible. Look at that. I'm outside the lines. My goodness. Um, you're going to go ahead and just swatch all your colors in. Then you know what you're working with. So you can do that. But I'm going to use one of these boxes just to illustrate my point about the blending when you have colors that are far apart. Let's say I have my darkest blue here, okay? And then I'm going to go into um, my middle tone and I'm going to try and blend that. I'm going to add a little bit of that. These are not going to blend. Watch. I'm going to do my dark to light and try and see how it's not working. I have definitely, it's not going to blend because they're not even close in terms of tone, in terms of family, and in terms of like shade, like how light to dark. So that's not going to work. So that traditional blending method is not what we want to do. So instead, what I'm going to do on the face of this box to get that shade is I'm going to take the dark blue and I'm going to swatch that on my acrylic block or my cellophane. I'm gonna take my medium tone pen. I'm gonna pick it up, just stripe and pick it up, and then I'm gonna just kinda of place it. Do you see how I'm kinda of placing it in here? Pick it up and place it down. And then the more you color, it's going to kinda of diffuse and pull a little bit farther. If I need a little more blue, I'm gonna get that down here. Let's get more blue, blue, blue. Pick this up on my pen and just continue with this picking it up so it's like the um the lighter color repels the darker color off of my pen and again this is my lighter color i'm picking up my medium color actually i'm picking up the dark shade and i'm placing it on here and then i'm just going to pull it out see how i'm doing that now that's going to be a lot more of a seamless dark to light and then i'm going to go back to my very lightest color and pull towards the center. Pull, pull, pull. And I have a lot more work to do on this, but you get the idea, right? Do you see how that's blending a little bit better than if I did something like this, it's not gonna blend at all. So you wanna just keep going ahead and pulling the dark color, adding it back in. See how I'm doing that? Adding it back in, that dark that I'm pulling off of my little acrylic block and keep working it and blending it down. And as I said, when you flip it over, you'll see exactly what you're doing on the back side. You see that blend through, you can see the blending and the bleed, and that's what we wanna do. Um, you can do that also with your little circle here. I've got two shades of yellow in my kit and one shade of green. I'm gonna take the lighter yellow and I'm just gonna quickly get this guy all yellow like this. The darker yellow, I'm gonna add on one side like this. And then I'm going to go back, and this is just really great practice to help you blend. And I'm gonna pull from the dark to the light, diffusing that, that line, eradicating that line as I blend it and dilute it and pull it out to get that blend. So you can do that with your shading card and get some practice going. Now let's get into our kit. Well, here's our sample card once again. 
Uh, I do want to talk about inks when we're working with alcohol markers. We're going to use a water or dye-based ink like a Memento or a Finesse. But I want to talk today about the contour ink. This is brand new from Hero Arts. Here's the refill. Here's the ink pad. It's a nice soft gray color that's going to give you like a very faint line to color in. So the color really does a lot. But what's unique about contour ink is it's a hybrid ink. It works with both watercolor and with alcohol markers. So water-based or either. It's either or. It works with everything. So it's like the go-to no matter what media you're using. This ink is a great way to go. So what I did is I got these stamps already placed on my stamping block which I didn't clean off from my coloring but I can that's totally fine and I want to ink up I want to make sure I it's all going to fit yep I'm going to ink it up with my contour ink or any water or dye based ink that you have but the contour ink is my brand new favorite that is in our new arrival section actually along with a lot of other new stamp and die goodies so I'm going to stamp this down like that. Look how faint that is. You can barely see it. Yeah, that's kind of exciting because then you're going to really see uh, the color and that's super important. So I'm going to start on this. Where's my sample? Let's get him back up here so you can kind of see. And now I'm not going to, I don't have time to do the absolutely every detail of this, but I do want to give you um, the basics. So what we want to do is make sure when we're coloring in, we're coloring with the lightest color, that's my GT1, it may be a different color for you, lightest color, but the thing is we can't do that traditional blend that I spoke of. It's just really not gonna work because these colors, again, are far apart by design. So what I wanna do is I wanna, again, go back to my acrylic block as a tool and get, rather than putting this really dark, dark blue down directly onto my piece, I want to use my mid-tone marker and pick up the blue and then, whoops, and then place it down in here in some of the dark and bleed it out. Do you see how I'm doing that? And it allows me to do a little bit more tweaking. Um, as far as the green, let's talk about the green too, because that is one of the colors that was in there. I believe it's a CG2. Here he is. You can start on this guy by going all over that leaf with the green. Am I on the? Yes, I am. Go all over that leaf with the green. But to get that contrast in, I don't have another green, right? So what am I going to do? Um, this is where we can really make some fun color choices. We could actually pick up a little of that blue if we want to, and we could throw some of that down and blend that in. Look at that. That's kind of fun. And just keep playing. See, if you play with it, you've got that dark going on there. And pull that out. Concentrate that on. Now, if you didn't, if you are not seeing the lines come through, I didn't stamp very hard with this um, contour ink. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp it in black just so you can see what I'm doing as well. I have memento right here in black, and I'm going to just ink up the rose just so you can see a little bit better. I know it's hard to see on the video sometimes. So I'll get that black down just so we can see. And again, coming in with the lightest of the three blue colors. Whoops, wrong end. Lightest of the three blue colors. Bring that in. And rather than doing that one, two, three traditional blend, I'm again using my acrylic block or my cellophane getting some of that blue down and I can pick it up with either the medium or the light tone I'm going to throw some of that right here and I go back to my medium I'm going to blend that with a little bit of that medium blue pull 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 dilute and you see how it's it's allowing me to do it a little bit better huh I can put some more of that blue on that medium color and pull it out like this coming back to my lightest color and diluting it even more and as you color over the light areas it's going to further deepen the lightest color like that and then you can make lots of choices where you can keep lots of areas light and put in just dark here and there where you need it so let's say i did the whole thing light let's say i did this technique where i just go over the entire piece with the light 
I'm just going to do a section to show you. You don't have to take it a petal at a time. Then I'm going to take that medium tone and pick up that blue and just spot, come in and do some spot blue here and there. And I'm picking up that dark color with my medium color. You see what I'm doing here? It's like painting, really. It's like painting. And I'm using a lot of the wrinkles and the little lines as the indicator of where to put some of these darker colors. That's a really good guide. Then it takes all the guesswork out of it. Come in with my light and further dilute that out. Sure, why not? And if it's splotchy, don't worry. That's if it's you leave it splotchy and it's not totally seamlessly blended. To me, it's more of a watercolor technique, honestly. So you can kind of come in and do a little bit of that. Okay, what I want you to do once you get all that colored and nicely blended out, you can fussy cut it out. Unfortunately, there is not a dye to match. Let's talk about the hearts. I'm getting 12 of those hearts in a package, so there's a lot to work with. And you can use a paper trimmer, or if you want, you can eyeball cut it. So you're going to go from, here's your um, circle, the little circle of the tag. So it's going to be a little bit below that. It's going to be basically, if I take, let me take something to line it up so you can kind of see. Let's move this out of the way. It's basically going to be below the tag, and it's bump to bump. Can you see that? Bump to bump. So I'm going to... If you want to make a mark, you can, if you're a little nervous about eyeballing it, but I am going to eyeball it, but you can certainly pencil mark that, and you're going to just cut a whole bunch of these guys straight across, bump to bump. So then you have these pieces to go on the edges. You are going to center the hearts onto the bottom, the top and the bottom, we're going to center those two hearts. I kind of eyeball it. If you want to be more exact and measure that out, you can for sure. Oops. Right like that. These I happened to cut down earlier. I measured them out and cut them, but I will do the last one with you so we can all, oops, and I didn't even do that right. See, that's why we don't cut in advance, people. Yeah, isn't that fun? All right, so we've got that, that, this one. Let's go to the top. I've got this guy. Let's match him up. And this is simply because I worked ahead. I know I cheated a little bit. Let's get him all going. And I've got this one here. He's all to the edge. All right, now my bottom one, let's put some adhesive on him. I use the permanent dot runner for this project. I'm gonna put this down here. And then I just need to, this is how I would do this with the other ones off camera is I'm just gonna trim him to fit the edge of the card like that. So I've got that. I'm going to pop up my sentiment. I have my little squares I put on here. Pop up my sentiment. I need to stack my flowers. I put some adhesive on the back of Mr. Flower that I cut out and I'm going to affix one here. I'm going to pop up the small bud, I've got my little squares on the back. I'm gonna pop him up maybe, maybe right here. I'm gonna do my leaves flat. I've got one flat leaf here. Uh, I've got one flat leaf maybe over here underneath. I'm going to pop up. I have a leaf I'm gonna pop up. Where should I put him? I'm trying to think and I, I've got this piece as well. Lots of pieces that we've cut out. So he's popped up. Maybe I'll put him, whoops, Maybe I'll put him over to the side up here. Maybe just like up here, a little dimension. Let's pull off the last of the squares on this guy. And I'm gonna pop him maybe like this. And it's as simple as that. Voila! Let's talk about all of the really great stuff from Hero Arts. This is their new summer release. Super exciting. Lots of stamps, lots of dies, um, combos where you don't have to, you know, pick each piece. It just comes together. And here's some inspiration as well uh, of things you can do with these stamp and die sets. Uh, so many intricate, unique, different things they've got going on. Um, I'm just a huge card maker and I just love this release. I think in particular, I love the succulent. I think that's fantastic. What a great coloring surface. Those of you who have taken a coloring class with me um, last year virtually, I did a um, succulent 
marker class. And I just love coloring succulents because you can just really play with all the different shades of green um, and the different tones. And that's a really great stamp. Here's some others as I'm flipping through all of this that you can see. Um, just really exciting. We're so excited to have these in stock for you and ready to ship. Here's some of the stencils and the stamps. I love these. Some are jumbo. This is a regular size, but, and it comes with the matching die, which is great. So be sure to snap all of those up. Now, you know we're known for our Totally Tiffany items. We've got some brand new ones that just arrived, too, uh, that we've never carried before, and they're brand new. We've got the Katya, the Katie. I think there's one more. Check out our website. if you, There's a category called Totally Tiffany, and it's got um, all of them listed, and the new items are listed first. Uh, I believe, yeah, this is the one, Katie. There's another one up there that's got... Uh, just for the marker storage, which is really great. And then these have long been out of stock and are back in stock, the stamp storage pocket, six by seven and a half really size. And you can fit um, all kinds of goodies in there, tab storage, really great. Our Gemini plates are back in stock. Those have been out for a while, along with this fine tip glue applicator. That's definitely a must have. Briefly talk lettering. I've got this brand new set from Zig. It, this is the set I've always wanted that they finally have made because I've had to buy everything separately. It's the twin black marker assortment set. It's got uh, four different markers in it, seven different tips. There's one tip that duplicates. Scroll brush. Look at all the stuff I did. I spelled scroll wrong. I was quickly putting this together, but it's got all the different tips. My favorite has got to be the dot. The scroll does the double image, calligraphy, journal title, brush, all that good stuff. Look at the look at the dot one. Let me flip this over. So if you want to put, you know, you're going to write hello, something like this. I'm just doing this super fast for you. Hello. It's got that dot end so you can just dot really easy. It's a great titling marker um, or adding embellishments to, you know, the edges of pages. You could do a lot with that. The scroll and brush, as I said, has that double end to do the double end line. You can do lots of fun things like that. Kind of fun to kick up your writing. And of course that brush tip to do your, your lettering like this kind of a thing. Love. We'll do that really fast. Fun. And then, you know, writer tips. So that is a must have. That, as I said, is that hand lettering zig set. Beyond that, we've got the scroll and brush in a multicolor set. We've got some beginning lettering sets. Let me grab those. Beginning lettering sets like this. These are quite fun. And this guy's really great. The mono drawing pens, permanent pens, six different sizes for great for permanent marker, journaling, doodling, um, notating, planners, all that good stuff. The Fudinasuko, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. This is by Tombow as well. This is a, a really unusual pen that I wish I could just reach out and show you. It's got a brush tip, but it's a hard brush tip. Can you see that? It's a hard brush tip that is really great to manipulate. So if you give pressure, you'll get a broad tip. And if you go light, you'll get a fine tip, but it's a really it's a really rough tip. It's well known in the planner community as a must have pen. So there's the two pack black and the multicolor as well. And lastly, on the lettering front, of course, I want to shamelessly plug the white uh, Uniball Signo, my favorite white pen in the whole world, the one that doesn't skip, the one that does it all. That is a must have along with gold, silver, red, and black. And then, of course, our glue markers, which is in our adhesive category, but there's so many different sizes. This is the chisel tip. I wanted to just call attention to that because, of course, um, my favorite is foiling. So you can do lots of fun things, like if I was going to write hello on this tag really fast. And I just need to let it dry. So that says hello. I'm letting it dry. I've got a dry one here. I would then take my foil. Any foil will do. Of course, we have foil, but any of the foils will do. You're going to rub that good side facing you on top of that tag and lift it up. I need to spend a little more time. And you're going to get that lovely foil accent. Here's one I did where I took more time. So you can do lots of fun things. Any type of glue pen will work. We have so many different tip sizes in the Zig 2A glue. In case you need more inspiration, we've got a whole host of older class kits available on our website that you can do on your own to do all kinds of fun things. Um, 
we've done over this past year as we've been virtually crafting with you. There's lots of fun goodies that are very complete that give you stamps in there, all kinds of good stuff, watercolor kits. This is this guy here, fun, fun. So be sure to check that out in our classes and virtual events category. Purple tape, it's worth mentioning. Um, this stuff is, it's really wide so you can rip it to size. It's great not only for putting it down with your die cuts that you're gonna feed through your die cut machine so it won't move and wiggle. Of course, that's great. It can also anchor down stencils with a temporary tack. And if you're masking an area to add a border, like say you are blending. Where did my sample go? Oh my goodness, I gotta find it. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, so here's my sample of a background I blended and I didn't use the purple tape. Do you see how it ripped? I wanna show you that. See how it rips when you don't use, and this, I used a low tack tape that is supposed to be low tack and it still did this. That's why the purple tape is gonna be your best bet to mask an area, do your blending, and then you're good to go and you haven't damaged your surface. It peels right off. It's kind of like a painter's tape, but a little more tack because you need that. It's because painter's tape is not the same thing, but it doesn't have too much tack that it's going to destroy the surface you're putting it on. So die cuts, stencils, masking areas, really great, really handy. Um, beyond that, some essential tools I just wanted to call out. If you don't have a corner rounder or you can't find your corner rounder from 15 years ago, I know there are some of you out there. This is a really great set. Um, it's a really a basic item to have in your arsenal. And if you don't have it, now is the time to grab it. This is a half inch and a full one inch uh, rounded. You can kind of see the size here, the rounded shape. Let me do it like that so you can see. Oh, you can, you can see me, my reflection. There I am talking to you. Um, that is the shape of the corner. Really great to add that finishing touch to your your cards and your photos that you're mounting onto cardstock. I just really like a rounded corner. I think it looks very like finished, like your project's finished. And speaking of finishing, this is not a tool, but I just want to interject. If you're looking to ink the edges of your project, because yes, I like to corner around my sentiment or my image, and then I like to ink the edges. This is this is the only set you're really going to need. This set has um, the four best colors of inks that are more natural versus your basic black. There is a black soot in here, but it's a little bit of a softer black along with the walnut stained vintage photo and antique linen. Let me go back to our friends at Hero Arts. This is an ink. Now, how is this different? This is an ink to do the no line coloring, but it is a hybrid ink, meaning you can use it with alcohol markers. You can use it with water-based markers and watercolor. You can use it with pretty much any coloring medium, colored pencils, anything, one ink. So you can do that no line effect where you don't see that harsh black outline. It's just a really soft outline that tends to fade away as you color on top of it. One ink will do all of the different mediums you're working with. So that's the contour ink from Hero Arts. Don't miss that. That's exciting. Now back to our tools. We've got the precision tweezers. These are fantastic because they're so economical and you've got all the different sizes to scrape, scoop, pick up, place, whatnot. It's got it all in there. So rather than just having one tweezer, you can have multiple for whatever you need to do. Wow, that was a lot. It went really fast. Uh, I'm so glad you could join me today. Of course, we have the show specials. Uh, I'm going to flash those on the screen and cut them into this video so you can see what's going on, so you can take advantage of some amazing deals on our website at shopbecreative.com. You can also go on our homepage and scroll all the way down to sign up for our email list, and then you can always be informed of special sales, new arrivals, uh, and where we're going to be, if we're going to be traveling soon, we hope so, and other virtual events just like this one. So uh, thanks so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, we're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash shop be creative all together. And, um, and reach out if you, you need anything. I'm always here. And um, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your cropping day.